I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here in Closing Arguments. We're live in Fairfax County, Virginia, the site of the trial. Two Hollywood stars going at it, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. But I want to begin the program tonight with a quote from a song from one of the iconic rap trios of all time, Houdini. Houdini had a song called Friends. And one of the lyrics from that song, Friends, was friends. How many of us have them? Friends, ones we can depend on. And that's a big, big theme in that courthouse behind me today. All about friendship. And how many people have friends? You know, you know the friends I'm talking about, friends like I grew up with. My best friends in the world are the ones that I grew up with in New Jersey. We were kids together. Now we talk to each other, text all the time. Something goes wrong. Any one of us can call another one and we'll be there. Whatever, whatever you need. You don't even have to ask. We'll just do it. I mean, those are the kinds of friends. But how far would you go for one of those friends? Would you lie for one of your friends? And there are different kinds of lies, right? You can tell a little white lie, maybe cover up for something that they shouldn't have been doing or help them out on a, on a job reference or something. And then there are bigger lies, much more serious lies, like lying to investigators or swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, going inside a courthouse and committing perjury. Would you do that? Would you do that for a friend? Well, let me tell you about what happened inside the courtroom today. Because Johnny Depp on trial called one of his best friends in the world to the stand. His name is Ike, Isaac Ike, obviously from New York. I heard the accent. Um, and he testified, and, and he was testifying for Johnny Depp. And, and the question uh, for this jury really is, um, was he telling the truth, right? Because he got on the stand and he was talking uh, about Amber Heard, and he was accusing her of lying about domestic violence, basically proving to this jury, if they believe him, exactly what he's accusing her of, lying about the nature of what was going on inside that house, lying about Johnny Depp being someone who commits domestic violence. It's a big issue, huge issue in this case. So let, let me tell you a little bit about Ike, Isaac Baruch, because this guy, in some sense, he was a character witness because he talked about his friend Johnny, Johnny Depp, and what a great guy he was. But more than a character witness, he was a character. And, and that's important, not just because he was entertaining folks inside the courtroom today, but because if you're a witness and it's about your credibility, you want the jury to believe you, right? Johnny Depp's attorneys obviously want the jury to believe him, but you as a witness, you're getting up there, you're swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. You want the jury to believe you. And part of that is connecting with the jury and being someone that they like. A, a jury is much more likely to believe someone they like than someone that they dislike. And let me tell you what happened inside that courtroom today. <laughs> this guy, Ike, uh, I came out, I like Ike, okay? And it's, it's not, I'm not making any determination of what the truth is in this case, but I like the guy. And part of it probably was the New York background and the personality he brought on the stand, but it was also his attitude, his demeanor, just the way he was. So rather than me describe him for you, let me show you a little bit of, of Johnny Depp's good friend taking over that courtroom today. <laughs> He didn't buy any paintings there. Instead, he offered me a complete patronship. So what did you understand he meant by um, becoming your patron? Well, it was going to financially make it possible for me to just paint every day and put together a body of work so that way then it could be sold. Did you take him up on that offer to live at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, how did that make you feel? I started crying is, you know, one day, you, one day you're in your mother's garage selling paintings for a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars on eBay. Next thing you know, you, you, it's an art show, and like you don't have to worry about deadly squat. Of course, of course, uh, I was, I was flipping out. When did you move into the Eastern Columbia building? The next day after we met and we talked. 
the next day, and here I am in front of this building. This is a beautiful building. This is like, you know, it's whatever, 13 floors, but it's like from the 1930s, some Art Deco, beautiful building. And I'm looking, I'm going, all right, this is unreal. What, there's gonna be, you know, all right, it's gonna be one of these apartments or whatever, one of these places here. I go in with uh, Kevin Murphy. He takes me all the way up to the roof. We go, we go to, uh, into penthouse two, and this, I walk in and I'm like crying, going, "This is a, it's beautiful. This is like a, a mansion uh, situation to me." We decided, okay, like 25 pieces of work, large scale, and I w and Johnny says, "Hey." What, how long you think this will take? I said, I've never done it before. I don't know, maybe a few months. And were you able to comp complete the paintings in, the, in a few months? No. It's, it's after, it took me, to, to, in order to make two large-scale paintings, it took me like to almost two months. And did you develop a relationship uh, with the defendant in this case, Ms. Hurd? Yeah. And did you get along with Ms. Hurd? I loved her. I fell in love with her just like Johnny fell in love with her. I fell in love with her. She's uh, t uh, t totally respectful, gracious to me, uh, that she's got great teeth, uh, that she treated me with complete respect. As I walked in, and she's in the kitchen at the counter, and she's doing a beauty facial mask, and uh, so she can't offer me. And I'm going, hey, is that something that can help me? And she looked at me and she goes, no. <laughs> and that, and I'm laughing. And then she laughed after because she didn't realize she was making a joke. Amber Heard was smiling there. That's Johnny's good friend. I mean, he was friends with her as well, but it's a witness for Johnny Depp. You saw he took control of that courtroom. Let me bring in Court TV uh, legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who is uh, with us here outside the courthouse. Unbelievable the and way... he's got great teeth. No, thank you, thank you, but <laughs> this guy, I yes. mean, bigger than life. Bigger than bigger life. Bigger than life. So relatable. Uh, he came across genuine and real and said a lot of things maybe people were thinking and was comfortable on the witness stand. I mean, you could hear the audience or the gallery laughing along with him, Johnny laughing, Amber cracking a smile. The jury sees all of that. Now, the judge wasn't quite as amused by his antics, but definitely the star witness, one of the most memorable witnesses on court TV that I've been a part of, maybe my favorite, Vinny. It, it's like, you know, he, he was like doing a one-man show up there, you know, and he had the lines, the zingers. It was natural, it wasn't forced. Um, I can't imagine some, what they, they might not like it, I don't know, but I can't imagine someone saying, yeah, I don't like that guy. You, you, you're gonna like him. Right, you like him, and like you said, you, because you like him, you listen to what he's saying, maybe you believe him a little bit more, and he openly admitted his love for Amber Heard, which a lot of times, witnesses who may seem biased may not, they may hesitate to show affection for the other side. He didn't, and that makes him maybe even more credible. What, what, a, what a character, witness, and character. <laughs> let's, let's bring in our other guests who are joining us tonight. Kyla Colm is back with us, criminal defense attorney, family law attorney. That's like the perfect combination uh, for this case. And also with us, John Delatore, forensic psychologist. He's in San, Al San Antonio, Texas. Uh, great to have you both here. Great to see you. Um, uh, Kyla, let me start with you. Um, this witness, how important... How, well, first of all, do you like Ike? Let me ask you. Yeah, I mean, I think he's doing a great job. The one thing that I like about him is that he's relatable. I mean, who doesn't want to be a good friend to a celebrity? Um, he's sitting in a position that a lot of people maybe in the jury want to be in one day. He's not using big words. He has a very open posture. Um, he's very believable. And I mean, the jury at the end of the day has the job to weigh the credibility of a witness. And I think that he's very credible at this point. John, th this is a guy who was just like kind of laying it out there, um, very relatable, someone who I, I feel like I know him. You know, he's just testifying in court, but I feel like I know him. 
Yeah, absolutely. It goes to show what kind of relationship that he has with uh, Johnny Depp. And I think that's key here because part of me also, when I when I experience all of that he's talking about when he's on the stand uh, testifying, a part of me views him as sort of like the court jester, right? The, the king's fool, right? That he's the guy that's going to tell all of these stories to distract from whatever it else, you know, some important thing that needs to be happening. He's, he's there to bring levity to the seriousness of the situation. Absolutely. The other part of it is, is he, he humanized Johnny Depp. Like, he's a movie star, but Johnny Depp's friends with this guy. Johnny Depp is good friends with this guy for life, and he's like a regular guy. To me, that, that's an important part of all this. All right. Now, he had important testimony uh, besides just, you know, kind of ingratiating himself to everyone who was watching. He also spoke, though, about Amber Heard and, you know, his thoughts about the accusations that she's made. Let's take a listen to part of that. I think you testified already you're pretty angry with Ms. Heard, right? I when? I, I wrote it down that you Oh, are... about all the phony, about the phony pictures what? that were that were taken and put in uh, tabloids and about the fake narrative and about uh, and the way she's uh, try, uh, at trying to got a... Uh, a, a, a fraudulent DV claim to extort and blackmail uh, a man. Uh, yeah, that kind of got me uh, uh, pretty angry frustrated, confused, angry, upset. Yes, which is why I said the best thing for us to do is not to talk to each other. Okay. And, yes. And was it fair to say you're still angry with her? Oh, you know something. It's six years. But it's we just heard you give years. your version. Am I angry anymore? I'm not, you know, I, what I am is tired. And I want this all to end. Her to go heal, him to go heal. So, you know, you, the, it, it, so many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created, and it's gone out the door and around the world. And so I don't, e I, I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years, and that's affected by stuff. It's, it's, it, I don't, I, I'm not angry at anybody. I want the best for her, for her to take her responsibility, heal, and, 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 and move on. I told you, folks. I mean, and the way he turned that, Chanley, was amazing because this is cross-examination. They're going yeah. after him, trying to pin it. You don't like her anymore. And then all of a sudden, ah, six years. It was six <laughs> years ago, Chanley. Exactly. He spellbound the defense attorney to the point that she didn't interrupt. Let him just rail against Amber Heard. He also is kind of playing this uh, advice, you know, friend who gives advice, move on with your life. It's been six years, and it's just... I've so never, I've, I've one of my faves. never seen anything like this before. Uh, Kyla Coleman, that was cross examination. That was, that was the witness winning cross examination. Yeah, that was a little odd for me because as a defense attorney and family law attorney, it's my show when I go on cross-examination. I am asking very controlled questions. I'm not going to let somebody get up there and just get you away with You can't control I, Kyla. You're not going <laughs> to control I. Nobody controls. When he's in the courtroom, he, he's in charge. No, he should have kind of narrowed the scope of it a little bit because he had a chance to save himself. If the question would have just been, are you still angry with her? And it was a yes or no answer and he got in there and got out, it would have been okay. But now Ike has had a chance to redeem himself by saying, hey, I just want both parties to heal. I'm the peacemaker here. And he kind of redeemed himself a lot with that. John Del Toro, I want you to kind of chime in here on, on, on this man as a witness. You get to a, a, a bit of his personality, the way he takes control. Is that the kind of person people tend to believe? You can like someone, but ultimately in a courtroom, it's about believing someone. You know, it's not only about that, but it's about the attitude of the jury as well. Where do they come from? What kind of people do they like to be around? And he's absolutely, he's so charming, right? He's so quick-witted, right? He's definitely someone that you want to be around day to day, you know, that to have, to interact with on a positive basis. And and for the, for the most part, I think some people will absolutely uh, view him as probably the most credible witness that they'll hear. But then there are other people that might be a little bit turned off by this, 
right? That you have to understand the jury as it's moving along, as the testimony is going to figure out, okay, well, who do I put up next to make sure that I keep uh, the jury on my side? Yeah, I almost feel like he's going to be at my next high school reunion, like I graduated with him. I don't know. That's just me. 